Good morning YouTube and welcome back to your financial independence. So in today's video we're going to be going over three stocks that I would consider in my own opinion a buy in this market. We're going to be going over two stocks that I own. Uh, so I may be a little bit biased you know because I own the stock, love the companies. And then we're going to be going over one stock that I've never done on this channel. I don't see anybody on YouTube doing it. I mentioned it in the past like a video or two ago. But we're going to be going a little bit more in depth on that to actually see what that stock is basically in between a growth and a value stock and i can point that out as we go along but before we continue if you enjoy this content please hit the like button subscribe button and hit that bell notification that way you'll be notified anytime i post a video so now the reason why y'all clicked on the thumbnail let's get into this but first, we're going to be going over um, or some news that actually came out. If you were if you were invested in cannabis plays or you pay attention to the market, you may have noticed a run up. You know, basically at the market close, as that you know tends to happen with a lot of cannabis stocks. So uh, right here, this is the reason why. So Malta to become the first country in Europe to legalize recreational cannabis. So. Um, I, I, I want to say it was 21 years or older, basically the recreation states that are in the United States, basically the same thing, but the entire country of uh, Malta. So, you know, more and more countries legalizing, eventually the United States is going to do this. Uh, that's the really the big reason why I'm invested in cannabis plays, uh, strictly U.S. plays, because Canadian plays are still money losers big time but uh let's go ahead and get into this actual video the reason why y'all clicked on the thumbnail so the first stock up here is chewy now this is a stock that i've owned ever since basically i started investing i've been buying more and more shares i'm up to 140 or 150 shares i don't know if my order that i filled yesterday went through or not because i usually do limit buys but uh, yeah, this is something I've been buying all the way down. I mean, we were reach highs of like a hundred and it says a hundred and eighteen, but I want to say it, it hit a hundred and twenty dollars, which is insane. Uh, definitely, probably to the should have taken a little bit of profit there because it was so overvalued. But anything below like seventy five, in my opinion, is a good value on this stock. So now let's look at some of the statistics. So market cap twenty one and a half billion, basically. Uh, Ford PE is 175. That may look expensive, but when companies are just now s slowly becoming profitable, if they have a couple profitable quarters or something like that, those numbers can get skewed so much in a way to make it look like a low PE or a very high PE. Um, you really have to wait until these companies are profitable for you know a year, maybe even two years to get an actual Ford PE, especially with companies growing very fast. And then uh, price to sales of a 2.68, which for the amount of growth that they're having is not a bad price at all. So number of analysts for earnings, they're, they, they were um, estimating 30 cents of earnings next year. I listened to their conference call. They reported earnings on uh, Thursday, I believe. I listened to the conference call, everything Friday. Um, they missed on EPS. They basically matched on... Um, revenue i want to say don't quote me on this but it was 2.21 billion and that's what was expected uh, i think next quarter is like 2.44 billion or something like that of uh, top line revenue but analysts got a little bit worried because they have a, a very honest executive team there and they basically said you know like hey you know we missed out on money because mainly they're wet dog food they're still having issues with that um basically just the supply chain in general just like a lot of companies are saying like it is hurting us and it makes sense because they're an e-commerce company but just look long term that's all i gotta say like stuff like this passes you know look long term that's basically what i'm trying to say so the average estimate they had 30 cent of eps they moved it down to one cent for next year um the average estimate which I, I believe, I mean, that that's awesome because, you know, they're going to beat one cent in my opinion. Uh, maybe not do 30 cent, but I could definitely see like 20-something cent of EPS. Uh, for revenue, the average estimate, uh, this hasn't really moved around that a lot. So I think they're expecting, you know, mainly just the supply chain to hurt profitability and not revenue. 
Uh, they're going to be growing almost 20% next year to $10.63 billion of uh, top line revenue. So phenomenal company, you know, high growth rate. So this is one market that they just got into. I think they announced this uh, seven or eight days ago. Um, I forgot off the top of my head the uh, company that they partnered with, but you could easily look it up. So uh, talking about pet insurance, the market has been basically at an average annual growth rate of almost 24.2% from 2016 to 2020. The total number of pets insured reached 3.1 million at the year end of 2020. Um, this is one of these markets that I could see growing for the next decade. Um, and that's one of the reasons not only is Chewy easier as far as getting your dog food ordered or delivered to your door, you don't have to worry about forgetting it. It's just as cheap as buying it from the store. Um, you can throw in treats to there. They have a veterinarian service so you can have prescriptions delivered right there to your door so your dog never runs out of whatever medication they need um, or heartworm um, prevention basically medicine pet insurance like they're getting they're diversifying into so many different revenue streams basically it, it's it's insane and the pet insurance industry is a very profitable business um, and they're building out their auto ship program that I want to say that was like 70, 70 to 80 percent of their revenue is auto ship program. So think of it like, you know, how Amazon has Amazon Prime. Think of it kind of like that in a, in a sense. And then uh, they're building out their own brand names in their e-commerce so they don't have they can make their own product for cheaper and then sell it for more. So it's more gross margins go up there. Like the way they're building out their business, I would not be shocked at all if they're doing, you know, 15, 20 billion dollars of top line revenue. And I would say, you know, 2026, 2027, which that would be amazing, you know. So we have some of the revenue projections here. Uh, this is just off of uh, Caven Investments. This is a source. Where I've read this article here recently. So revenue projections for 2023, uh, $13.6 billion. 2022, they have them at $11.2 billion. I don't know what's going on with the price of sales right there, but they have price targets uh, basically for 2023 of $140, $115 for 2022, and $92 for this year. Um, which the way, yeah, that's not going to happen this year, just the way the market is sold down and stuff like that. But that still represents, you know, 70, 80% upside, you know, average price target 2023. So it's still got plenty of growth to it. Uh, the valuation is knocked down really high. So the next talk that we're going to talk about, I consider this a value and a little bit of a growth, not as high growth as some of these other stocks. Uh, so Corsair Gaming, $20.50. Tax loss harvesting has really killed this stock, you know, and, and people don't expect this stock to move until, you know, like February or maybe even like March of next year. So there's there's no downside, the, the thought of people, there, there's no downside to selling this stock um, to maybe cover some of their Tesla gains or NVIDIA or whatever. Um, and hedge funds do that a lot too. So that can the, the big money when they start doing that, they can really nosedive a stock. And then you got that one, um, the huge hedge funds that that own like a bunch of this stock. I, I forgot the actual name of it, um, but yeah, they've been selling out tremendously. So this stock was at like forty five, fifty dollars, you know, February of this year. Now it's twenty dollars and fifty cent. Uh, get into some of the statistics about this stock. Um, it's now a two billion dollar company with a price to sales of one point zero nine. So we're getting so close to that one price to sales, um, and I could see this honestly being a point something like a point nine eight or point nine five price to sales, which is insane. Uh, you would be basically pricing this company as if it's slowly going to start losing revenue. Um, that's kind of how it's getting priced into the market right now. So number or the estimate earning estimates. So they uh, have eight analysts next year with the average estimate 
of earnings of $1.59. So slightly higher than this year. You can sit, kind of see some of these companies as supply chain. They're expecting it to start slowing down Q1, Q2 and basically be somewhat gone Q3, Q4. And then they're looking basically towards 2023 being a, a very profitable year and you know the supply chain stuff being kind of behind them which is going to help out companies like this uh chewy like all these other stocks that are getting hurt by supply chain in phase um a lot of companies are getting hurt by that so revenue estimate they have nine analysts uh, average estimate of two billion dollars next year. So it's still, you would think, you know, this company is going to lose money the way they're getting priced in somewhat uh, for a sales growth at six point five percent. And maybe yeah, in these markets, that's not the highest percent in the world. Like, oh, it's not growing by 20, 30, 40, 50 percent like we're used to. Especially if you're a new investor starting in twenty twenty or twenty twenty one, you're like, I want to be in stocks that are growing forty percent a year. And you're not looking at, you know, the balance sheet, you know, having good fundamentals and then the price to sales, the low valuation stocks that represent a lot of upside, especially when they're still growing and they're being priced as if they're going to start losing revenue like three, four, five percent a year. So valuation on this stock is ridiculous. Um, I took this screenshot right here from the Motley Fool. So Corsair Gaming CEO. Andy Paul recently said that the company is witnessing an acceleration in games and streamers buying gear for the first time or upgrading faster in the past. That's not surprising. The demand for video games and related hardware and software in 2021 hasn't dropped off last year's pandemic fueled surge. So now Nuzu estimates that the global gaming market could generate $176 billion in revenue this year which will now basically be a flat line over 2020. Uh, what the firm estimated for global gaming market could generate nearly $219 billion in revenue by 2024. So you can kind of see these numbers and get a really good understanding of the overall market that Corsair Gaming participates in. Um, uh, which is a growing market. Um, it's, it's backed by a lot of young people you know, a lot of young people, including myself, we love gaming and stuff. This is this is not anything that's going anywhere. If anything, it's going to, you know, take over more and more. Um, as you get younger people growing up, you know, having kids, then they get into gaming and stuff like that. So this is a positive impact on sales on video games, hardware as well. So, you know, the hardware is kind of where Corsair Gaming comes into play. Um, so yeah, a lot of tailwinds in the future, especially, you know, 2023, 2024 and 2025. So investors need to look past the short term issues. I feel like this is the biggest thing with just about every single stock right now, you know, with the market or especially the small cap, um, market getting crashed basically for like the past two months. Um, investors need to look past the short term, like and if you can't handle it, say you're looking at your market or something like that or your portfolio and you don't have money to buy the dip and it's scaring you and you're thinking about selling out a, a stock or something like that, dude, close the app and do not open it up. Like don't, psychology is very important. Emotions and stuff like that when it comes to money, you cannot mix emotions and money. Uh, that's one really hard belief that I've got. And it's happened to me a couple times, you know, every, nobody's perfect. There's been a couple times where I've considered like, man, I'm down on this stock. I could just sell out, take my loss on it. You know, maybe I'm dumb. Maybe I made a wrong decision. Um, and then I'll be like, dude, whoa. And I'll close out of that. I'm like, you know, I ain't open it up for the rest of the day. Maybe not even tomorrow because there's no sense to. I can't buy stocks anyways. And then I'll just use time to, you know, look at the company, um, readjust my thoughts on the company and stuff make sure i didn't make a mistake so they're they're having re revenue estimates of you know going out to 2023 of 2.2 .2 billion so that's you know growth is definitely in the future for this company it's not like it's going to start losing revenues even though it's getting priced as it is so now the third stock on here 
I've never talked about this stock on my channel, uh, which is Cinemark Holdings. Uh, so, you know, theater chain. So as you see here, we, you know, the pandemic, it, whenever it struck its low, it was about an $8 and $19 or, or my bad, $8 and 19 cent stock. Uh, today it's about $16.26. Uh, I, I don't know exactly where it closed out, but it's somewhere around that range. So, I mean, you, yeah, it doubled up from the pandemic low, but a lot of companies got way, way undervalued because we thought the world was going to be shut down for months at a time. Um, investors didn't know what the near term or far term future looked like, which uh, the market always likes to forecast the future when it doesn't know the future at all, especially when whole countries are shutting down. Not good for the market. So uh, it has doubled up. But look how much room that it's still got left to go. You know, if you like looking in the past, which I don't always recommend, um, but you can kind of forecast out revenue, see if they can get back to where they were before, um, you know, strengthen their balance sheet and stuff like that. And then on a good valuation, they should be able to reach back up to where they were or even past. Um, as you look at some of those companies, you know, uh, like Live Nation and stuff like that, that was a stock I was invested in, made a lot of money off of. Um, they can't, they, you know, it blew past what it was before the pandemic because, you know, now it has a lot more money, a lot more money got put into the economy, stuff like that. Um, so Ford PE is a 31 on this company right now. You just got to bear with me on that and I'll kind of explain myself through uh, price of sales of a 2.10, so uh, two, $2 billion market cap too, so still considered a mid cap basically because small caps $2 billion to $300 million. Uh, so slightly above that range. So yeah, it's a little bit expensive, so we'll get into that. Uh, this is a lot of tailwinds going for this company right now. So earnings estimates, they're going to have 10 um, analysts next year. Average analysts this year expected negative three dollars and 71 or negative three dollars 71 cent so that's a huge loss a massive loss for this year so take that massive loss and then next year they're expected 74 cent of positive eps so company going from losing a ton of money to now getting back a pretty good bit of money and then check this out. Revenue estimate, the average an, uh, analyst is basically predicting $2.84 billion from this year's $1.45 billion. And each, each and every quarter, I'm still, uh, I think I'm on uh, Q2 of this year's conference call right now. So I usually go back and watch as many as I can or listen to at least. Um, and you see that, like the company's fundamentals are getting stronger, their revenue every quarter is drastically going up, which I'll show you. Um, I think it's the next slide after this. So yeah, they're expecting 90, basically 97% revenue growth, and they're going from an unprofitable to a profitable company. So imagine what that's gonna be doing to the Ford P, the price of sales when they basically double up. You're basically gonna be putting this stock at you know one price of sales with like a 15 Ford P, um, and it can even swing even more than that. Basically depends on how much the public's willing to go out there and watch movies and stuff like that, um, which is something to pay attention to, you know, especially if the economy did slow down. So that's one thing that you would want to pay attention to. Um, so now uh, brokerages anticipate Cinemark Holdings will post quarterly sales of $593.6 million in the upcoming quarter, uh, which definitely beats estimates. Um, so $593.6 million in the current uh, fiscal quarter, so next quarter that's coming out. So four analysts have made Cinemark's earnings. Uh, the low sale estimate is 582.39 million. So even their low estimate is still beating um, the average estimate. You know the analysts are expecting. Well, um, the highest is 610 million. Cinemark sales reported 98.24 million in the same quarter last year, um, which was Q4 2020. Yeah, Q4 2020, I do believe. Um, which suggests a year-over-year -year growth rate of 504%. Yeah, 
because you you know nobody especially during the delta phase and stuff nobody was wanting to do anything around other people in public because people were terrified and stuff like that um and you can see that this omicron variant this that's not really as much so like people are over covid you know unless there's a really bad variant like people are over it uh, so the firm expects um the issue of next quarterly earnings results on friday february 25th um, so that's that hasn't got confirmed. I do want to say that they're just putting a date out there, which is kind of dumb in my opinion, because those dates can swing around so much. So uh, they have uh, seven analysts, with uh, six of them being a buy. Um, oh yeah, my bad. They have eleven. So they have six at a buy, five at a hold, and one for sale. So uh, a little bit wishy-washy, you know, I would like to see a little bit of those people from hold come to outperform to make, you know, make it look better as, as far as hedge fund interest and, you know, stuff like that. So uh, the median is $24.50 price target. So that's still representing a 50% upside uh, with a high upside of about 100% coming in at $32. And uh, the the risk is kind of out of this stock, you know. The low forecast is a fourteen thirty represents a twelve percent, uh, which is like one day in crypto. So that was, I was a joke, you know. I I do like picking on crypto people a little bit, <clears throat> but I hope y'all enjoyed this content. Um, you know, make sure you subscribe, like, and comment. I'm gonna be trying to do a video basically every morning before I go to the gym before the market opens. So I hope you all enjoyed this video, you know, sh share down below in the comments if you think I'm dumb, stupid, or you like these stocks, you know, you like, you know, the first two I am biased because you know, especially Chewy, like I love Chewy so much. Uh, that's, that's like my stock. Nobody else on YouTube's really talking about it. So uh, comment down below if you do enjoy these picks or uh, share, share down below and I'll look into whatever company you put down in there. And if I do like it, I'll do further research and stuff like that. And I'll make a video on that if y'all would like. So uh, I hope y'all have a blessed day and catch me back on the next video.